You've been tapped to chair a committee, and now you have the important task of rounding out the team you will be working with for the coming year. What do you do? The good thing is that you're not alone in the challenge that lies ahead. Not only will you have the support of your club president and other leadership behind you, you also have the expertise and shared experiences of many Sertoma Club chairs before you. In this presentation, we will talk about what traits you should seek in filling out your committee. As you would expect, care should be exercised in selecting people to serve. When making committee appointments, the first and foremost consideration must be the function of the committee and the interest of your membership. Bottom line, you need to assemble an energetic, cooperative team. Now we know that the needs of each committee vary greatly. It all depends on things like your pool of available volunteers, the committee's purpose, and who will be leading the charge. However, there are some common things we should all be looking for. As such, committee members should be part of the bigger picture, fit the bill, work well with others, have a great reputation, and embrace inclusivity. You might be wondering what this means exactly. Well, let's examine these traits one by one. A strong committee candidate will be part of the bigger club picture. This means that they will add to the overall balance of your team. This can come in the form of a missing skill set that your committee needs to be successful or an extensive knowledge on a subject related to the committee's charge. For instance, if you're working on policy, it could be helpful to have a committee member with a background in governance or law. Or maybe you're leading a marketing subcommittee working on an upcoming fundraiser. If you don't have someone with social media knowledge, it would be helpful to seek that skill set out in your potential pool of candidates. Somewhat similar to that, you want committee members that fit the bill. Let me clarify this one a little. When I say that they fit the bill, I mean that they meet the guidelines set forth by the committee structure and offer new and much needed assets to your working group. First, your volunteers must have the time to give to Sertoma. They should be able to devote the necessary hours and days to committee meetings and planning sessions, as well as to execute assignments and show up as otherwise deemed necessary. One thing to keep in mind here, some companies urge their employees to participate in service club work and even provide compensation or time off, while others do not. Check on this point before making appointments that require time during business hours. Next, they might be able to offer up additional benefits that meet your needs. Looking for somewhere to meet? It can be helpful to have a volunteer with an available conference room where you can convene. The same is true when you are looking for event space, speakers, possible discounts on goods and services, and so on. This can be especially beneficial in cases where you are trying to secure donations and sponsorships. However, you want to be careful to not take advantage of this or rely on these things solely. You don't want members just because their occupational and professional pursuits qualify them for a certain committee. What the individuals may really want or are able to do may be something entirely different. Now let's think back to that balance we talked about earlier as it comes into play here. You want a committee made up of people that work well with others. We achieve this mentality when we look for an array of leadership styles. Each committee will be led by a chair. They're your leader. You will also likely want to include potential future leaders on your team. Not only do they make strong volunteers, but this is also a great place to help grow their skills and to see how they could fit as a future Sertoma chair, director, or even officer. And finally, you need your proverbial followers. These are your worker bees and the lifeblood of service to others. You need all three, and they need to work together well if you want your committees to succeed. Of course, your members can't just work well within the committee. They also need to have that so-called winning personality that enables them to represent the group positively to others. This includes both internal audiences, like your club's membership, and external audiences, such as program recipients, corporate donors, and the general public. As you can guess, this sort of positive representation feeds into our next trait, a good reputation. However, here we will think more about their reputation as a volunteer. In particular, there are three archetypes that I want to look at. First, we have the stretch runner. This is the type of volunteer that we want to avoid. A stretch runner is a volunteer who only works near award or recognition giving time. They are in it for the glory and not for the betterment of your club. This means that they will likely be more focused on what they can get out of it rather than the assigned task at hand. Next, we have the veteran. These are the club members who've been around for quite some time. What kind of track record do these people have? They can make for great leaders, but they can also be stuck in their ways. With this group, it's especially important to look at not necessarily the quantity of their work, but the quality of their work. And finally, we have the workhorse. These are your old faithful crew. With this group, we want to make sure that they are not overextended. Don't just reappoint them year after year because they have long been good and willing workers. 
everyone needs a break sometime. And lastly, we want volunteers that embrace inclusivity, meaning that they make sure that everyone feels welcome. This one can be a challenge in clubs where people have been friends and members for years. You want your committee to be compatible. They need to get along on at least a professional level if any work is going to get done. So, in short, try to appoint harmonious groups that work well together. However, you can run into pitfalls when people get along almost too well. What do I mean? Well, you can end up with volunteers that don't belong there. That is why we want to avoid the buddy system, which is the practice of appointing friends to committees just because they are friends. For example, she might be the president's best friend, but that doesn't mean she's the right fit to serve on the committee. Likewise, beware of cliques. They can occur when a small group attempts to control the club through committee chairs. Don't let it be personal or political. It has to be about what is best for the club. As we wrap up, here are a few final thoughts on assembling an effective working committee. Don't try to fit square pegs into round holes. If someone is not a fit, don't force it. It won't end up working for either party. Keep in mind that not all committees are desirable when it comes to volunteering. It's going to be hard to fill some spots. Rotate your volunteers. Keep members engaged by moving them around from year to year. It might even be time for them to take a break so that new volunteers can take a turn. And don't announce appointments too early. They must first be discussed with the candidates and should be withheld until official acceptance and approval are assured. Filling your committee can be a challenging task, but by following the advice outlined in this session, we're confident that you can build a successful, efficient, and well-rounded team. You can find additional training on this and many other topics in the training library within our Member Center at members.sertoma.org. We also encourage you to connect with others in our Members Only Facebook group at the link on the screen.